listen to this. With just over a month, I know, before the tax deadline, Fox 46 is getting results and bringing back Tax Tip Tuesday. This morning, we have the tax information you need to know if your family is in two households, which happens if there is the result of divorce here. So David Default, attorney with Sedoma Law in Charlotte, is with us to discuss. Let's talk first here, David, about the impact on these two household uh, families. With the, the change in the tax code, how are they affected? Well, so with the new tax code, there's going to be a lot of changes, uh, especially with the, uh, the deletion or the, the no longer being able to claim personal exemptions. Um, there's also going to be some changes as it relates to itemized deductions. Uh, they've increased our standard deduction almost double from what it was last year. So people that itemized uh, in one or two family households are going to uh, face some changes that they didn't have last year. How about if we talk about child tax credits? How's that affected? So one of the nice things with the new code is that they did increase the, the child tax credit. It went from $1,000 to $2,000, and they also made a larger portion of it uh, refundable. So you can get, uh, if you don't have enough tax, you still have the ability to get up to $1,400 of it back. Um, so that's always a good thing, tax credits being better than deductions. And now how does that work in terms of custody and who's able to do what with the child? So it's going to depend on where the child is going to spend most of their nights. Uh -huh. um, a lot of times when you've got uh, two family households, that's something that the parties will negotiate as part of their separation or their divorce, which party gets to claim that child tax credit. And of course, you've got an added layer here if you've got somebody, one of the two households, or both of the two households, I suppose, who are business owners. How does that all play in? Yeah, so for the first time with 2018, there's going to be a, uh, an additional deduction for what they call qualified business income. Um, you get a deduction of up to 20% of that income. It, do, it does only apply to uh, what we consider pass-through entities like sole proprietorships, S-corporations, limited liabilities, but that's a deduction that wasn't available in the past that business owners will get to use this year. We were just looking at the calendar before this segment started, and we decided, what, five weeks? Five weeks. So it, would you say that people need to give themselves, I mean, at this point, you only have five weeks, but people who typically would do it, you know, the week before or something, because of these changes, it's probably a good idea to give yourself a little extra time, maybe even get a a little extra help this year to be sure that you're getting everything out of it, right, that you can? Absolutely. There are some changes to the actual forms that we're using this year. Uh, the, the new code is introducing different schedules that we didn't have last year. So uh, even if you're familiar with your taxes, um, it is a good idea to maybe get some help this year. Never hurts. David Default with Sedoma Law. Thank you so much for uh, just cracking barely the surface, <laughs> I'm sure, for us there. Appreciate the time. Guys, take a quick break. we got more good day for you coming up right after the break.